In today's video, we're going to be taking another look at the tropics. It's been multiple weeks since I've made one of these tropics updates, and I think it's about time we do so. We'll be updating you guys on the sea surface temperature anomalies, of course, around the world. Don't worry, it's going to be pretty brief and not too boring. But I also want to show you a forecast from what they call the Super Blend, which is the Yukmet and then the European model. Those two models are pretty similar, actually. Um, but we're going to get some modeled guidance as far as where they think a lot of tropical activity could be this upcoming hurricane season. And obviously, as we get closer here to the start of it, we are getting more of that accurate data here uh, down the stretch. So I am excited to go over that with you guys today. Let's dive into things, and we're taking a look at the worldwide sea surface temperature anomalies. And again, I promise not to be too boring. So we will just glance at this. Uh, the two things that are pretty uh, prevalent here is this La Nina, which is really growing every time we do one of these updates. So it's looking bluer and bluer in this area. And that's pretty substantial. I want to put that out there. Um, you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, well, it's going to be a weaker La Nina. So does that mean it's not going to be as impactful for the hurricane season? But really, uh, the thing to note here is that anything below neutral typically has a very active hurricane season. And it doesn't really get any worse as that La Nina gets stronger. Uh, I would say it's less about there being a La Nina and it's more about there not being an El Nino as far as why the La Nina actually increases tropical activity. El Nino increases uh, wind shear over where our hurricanes need to develop here, uh, which is that main development region. That's a little bit skewed, but this area here, uh, El Nino kind of increases wind shear that goes against these hurricanes that are trying to track through there. And it really disrupts that activity, and that's why we see a lot less during an El Nino. But anything below that neutral, which is at 0.0, .0 degrees, we're right about there already. So right now, we've already kind of crossed that line. Uh, we don't see that shear entering those areas anymore. As a matter of fact, we see this uh, wind able to freely drive these storms uh, into these areas. So with that being said, uh, we've already kind of done a check mark here this is already past where we need it to be and really any further strengthening of the La Nina isn't going to make a difference I guess the only difference it'll make is a buffer room to where it can kind of weaken and it won't make a difference obviously if we begin to warm a little bit we're going to go back above that 0, 0.0 line so uh, the deeper into a La Nina it gets the less chance of it really crossing back into El Nino territory which by the time we're in hurricane season is already pretty much a, a non-factor uh, we can see that there is obviously substantially warm sea surface temperatures over the entire north atlantic so let's go ahead and dive into that actually and take a look here uh and the interesting thing is we have cooler temperatures in this area um but really the main areas that matter for hurricane season these areas here and then along kind of the southeast coast here these areas are all warmer than normal even your out to sea region where we get a lot of these storms you know that really just want to do wacky tracks that's mostly during the late hurricane season that we see kind of this activity the only area that's less favorable than normal at this point is this pocket here kind of that bermuda area which i'm sure we will see storms enter into this area and it could have an impact but of course we're still in may there is time for warming but on the other hand there is time for cooling in these areas as well so a lot of factors at play but I think it's really, really important to note that these areas are substantially warmer than normal. We're taking a look at uh, sea surface temperatures that are likely on par with what you expect to see during the height of the summer, like July, early August time frame. Uh, currently, we are seeing those types of sea surface temperatures in some areas in here. Uh, I would say especially in the deeper reds here, like around Cuba and Dominican Republic and Haiti areas to the east of there and then some of the southern mdr or main development region which is what we call this area here um these areas are months ahead of schedule which is obviously really really interesting and pretty frightening to think about now we're gonna take a look at some charts again i promise not to be too boring this is our nino 3.4 index and this is where we track really if we're in el nino or la nina we can see we were in a pretty substantial El Nino here for a while. Uh, the main lines to pay attention to is your 0.0, .0 line. That's the one we were talking about earlier. And then both the positive and negative 0.5 lines. Sorry, I went a little underneath there. Let's draw this one out too. So basically anything in between the outside two here, so the 0.5s, is going to be neutral ENSO is what we call it. Anything uh, below this point is going to be La Nina. 
anything above that point is going to be El Nino. So you can see we were in an El Nino, obviously, all winter time long until about uh, April time frame. We crossed into a neutral Enzo briefly. That rebounded back into an El Nino. And then now we've really crossed down below El Nino status. Right now we are creeping along that 0.0, .0 line here, as you can see. We do expect this to drop under very shortly. And again, this is the real line that matters. It doesn't have to be a negative one. It doesn't have a ne to be a negative 1.5 to be uh, really impactful for the hurricane season. It's really anything below this 0, 0.0 line is going to be uh, really letting those tropical systems freely move through without that El Nino type wind shear impacting them. So uh, really, this is kind of just, uh, you know, Door is closed above that line. Door is open below that line, I guess, is a really simple way to put it. Now, this chart is your overall North Atlantic sea surface temperature anomalies. And again, last time we made an update was somewhere in here. Uh, and we were talking about how we had seen a real, uh, actually, regression in those temperature anomalies in the North Atlantic. We have seen this quite rebound, actually, uh, up to about positive uh, 0.3 right there and you know we were just talking about you know 0.5 point you know 1.5 stuff like that in the el nino category this is the whole north atlantic so this is a much larger area so usually you're talking about smaller numbers but you know to be positive 0.3 in an area as long as as large as just the entire north atlantic is substantial so this is substantially above average for that large area when we take a look at our uh atlantic mdr which again i'm gonna um remind you is kind of that area off of Africa all the way to the Caribbean. That is our MDR for short, and it stands for Main Development Region. Uh, and that is where we see a lot of our tropical systems originate in there. So that is why that area is so crucial. Uh, but we can see we have been really creeping around, you know, about a degree above average Celsius. Again, when we made that video last time, we did see this drop to about half a degree above average but we've seen it again rebound right up to that uh one degree above average and it's kind of just hovering around there so i have no idea what happened here this seems to be an anomaly where it just dropped down and back up but we can see that 90 percent of this graph we've been hovering right around that degree above average point uh no idea why it did that uh, now for your caribbean sea surface temperature anomalies we have also kind of just been right around a degree above average so this has been really, really above average in the in the main areas that we typically watch for. Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, main development region. These are the areas that we've been watching uh, that we've seen consistently far above average. Again, this is Celsius, and this is large areas of the ocean that we're talking about. So to be a whole degree above average Celsius is wild and very high end above average temperatures usually you would see this in maybe one of our uh, main areas of the atlantic not all of them at once here's the gulf of mexico uh, where we've seen a little bit more fluctuation over the winter we were near normal we saw it really climb up there during march kind of during again our last update during april we had seen it drop off and it dropped off even more towards early may but we have seen it recently rebound quite a bit to where we're almost a degree above average here in the Gulf of Mexico as well. So we will have to watch and see if we see continued warming. Maybe we see more corrections in the downward direction there. Uh, obviously, I want to keep making these updates over the coming months. And we will know a lot more moving forward. Here is that kind of uh, super blend I was excited to show you guys. Um, this is uh, created by Ben Noel Weather. So shout out to them. They have a pretty cool website, especially for tropics and more climate type uh, model guidance, which is really interesting. Uh, but when we take a look at this, I mean, this is obviously very, very concerning. Um, not only uh, this factor here is a little bit concerning to me too, because this is kind of our out the area. Here is uh, Bermuda. I'm going to do an arrow where Bermuda is and then everywhere kind of to the east of Bermuda. This area is drier, so uh, we're really not seeing a lot of storms on these models curve in here. Um, that would be indic indicated by, obviously, wetter conditions in this pocket. Uh, we're seeing less of that than typical. And not only are we seeing just substantially above average uh, precipitation happening in your tropics in this main development area, again, indicating... Uh, that there is above average activity overall happening in this area, uh, tropical activity that is. Not only are we seeing uh, that occurring, but it is also moving into these very impactful areas from that point. You know, the Gulf of Mexico, uh, we're seeing it move up the East Coast. So this is obviously not what you want to see. 
a lot of these are not curving into this area, which really tells me that we're expecting to see high pressure near Bermuda, uh, which is going to really encourage these storms to wrap around that area and not go into it. They don't want to go into high pressure. Tropical systems are, of course, low pressure. So it's like oil and water. They're going to avoid each other. When we have strong high pressure present out here in the middle of the Atlantic, it's going to do a lot of this. It's going to go around. Uh, it's going to go into the Gulf of Mexico, perhaps. And if anything, it might curve early uh, and go into these areas way to the east of this high pressure. But it's not going to go into it. Um, so that is really, really concerning to see. And we can see that, obviously, almost all of our main development region, which, again, is our origination area of a lot of these tropical systems, is in the dark, dark green. So we're seeing highly above average activity. And this is only the June to August time frame. So this is kind of the early portion of hurricane season. August being that first month where we expect to see a lot of activity. September is the peak. And then October is a lot like, you know, August. Uh, and then here is your August to October time frame. And it really doesn't drop off. Uh, we see, again, some drier conditions in here. It kind of uh, gets a little bit less as substantial. Uh, but we see that these systems, again, are looking to potentially track up the East Coast potentially track into the Gulf of Mexico is what this model is indicating, as opposed to moving into this out to sea area near Bermuda, because likely this model is indicating a present high pressure system is going to be in place. Uh, once again, like I said, uh, we do see an area far to the east of this, of this high pressure system, where we actually do look to see potential storms tracking through, uh, but it looks like mostly uh, up the east coast and into the Gulf. I'm hoping this is uh, inaccurate because this is obviously looking quite drastic and very, very bad. Because not only is it showing a favorable storm track into the Gulf of Mexico and up the East Coast, uh, it is actually indicating, obviously, because of everything we've talked about before, highly above average conditions for development. And likely we're going to have far more storms than what is normal because of the above average sea surface temperatures likely uh, bordering on uh, record numbers that we're seeing in the Atlantic currently for sea surface temperatures. And then we don't have the El Nino present. So again, we're in that open door phase of La Nina uh, that we're expecting to move into. And that is going to really allow for these storms to flourish. So a lot of bad news here, I, I guess, is the trend um, on this super blend model. And I am curious to see how this does. Uh, these are two of the most highly regarded models, obviously the European model you guys know of, but the UCMET is also highly regarded, not only during hurricane season and during climate, but um, actually during snow systems, a lot of people use that model as the European model comes out later than it, and the UCMET usually is an indicator of what the European model run is going to do, so people will look at the UCMET and uh, they'll be able to see if the European model is trending east, north, south, west, usually because the European model will follow it. Uh, so these are two pretty highly regarded models that are used very, very regularly uh, throughout the weather community. Uh, so definitely very bad news here. And I, I would like to keep you guys up to date with this particular uh, graphic here. So over the coming months, we will do that um, as we approach the hurricane season. Obviously, July, August is the time frame we're especially talking about here uh, when things will really, really get going. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, I will keep you guys up to date. And we do upload every single day weather related content so be sure to subscribe uh, for those videos you can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it leave a comment down below and i'll see you guys in the next video